Now, again, the, the other thing, if you remember when we were looking at the standard textbook firm, the stereotypical firm, we said there's two things that, that the manufacturer has to worry about. Their own costs, which are the things indicated by the average cost of the margin cost curves. And the other thing is demand, the thing that's at least somewhat determined by consumers, which, uh, which is at least partly outside of the control of the firm. And I said in that, in that lecture that one of the few things we can say without knowing specifics about, about the product on the market is that almost certainly demand curves slopes downwards. Well, this is true as well in, in, in pharmaceuticals. However, there's a sting in the tail here, and this is the sting in the tail. Um, you know, in, in economic jargon here, we would say this is an inelastic demand curve. And what we mean by that is that that demand doesn't vary that much if price is very high or price is very low. And the way to think about this is, is as the, the second part of the slide here suggests, think of a life-saving drug. Um, I mean, everybody who needs this life-saving drug will prefer to pay very little, perhaps zero for it. But on the other hand, it was very expensive. Demand for the for the 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 drug would would not go down by that much. Um, so as I said when I was discussing demand in the the textbook firm, um, if if we're thinking about necessities, demand doesn't vary very much. And by and large, pharmaceutical products are considered necessities. You know, even if I don't know we're we're taking something like Lemsip for for a cold or something. Um, I mean, I can't remember that, you know, I mean, I'd probably complain if the if a, the cold treatment costs 10 pounds for ten, 10 of them or something rather than, I don't know, what's the cost, three or four pounds, but I still probably buy them. And that's the argument here that, that in pharmaceuticals, the demand curve is very steep. Demand is inelastic. That's to say, inelastic means it doesn't vary very much to, uh, relative to price. An ela elastic, elastic demand curve would mean that when the price is low, we buy a lot of the stuff. When the price is high, we would buy very, very little or perhaps none. But for the products that pharmaceutical sells, we're, we're talking about inelastic demand curves. Demand curves that doesn't change very much even if the price is high. The quantity demand doesn't change very much if the price is high. So this is... For most pharmaceutical products, we have an inelastic demand. Now, so we now have two things in pharmaceuticals that are different to the, the stereotypical firm discussed in textbooks. One is the shape of the cost curves. Uh, and the, the other is the shape of the demand curve. I mean, there's very sensible reasons, which we've which are now explained, I hope, uh, why both of these things are, are the case for pharmaceuticals. The shape of the cost curves is broadly determined by the very high fixed cost, which is very much connected to the cost of research and development, and of course also the cost of marketing. But we will leave that aside because there's argument that you said, we, we could argue that pharmaceuticals firms can exist without marketing but they certainly could not exist without the research and development. And so that's always going to generate a high fixed cost. And the second thing, the second difference between the output of, of pharmaceutical firms and our stereotypical firm discussed in textbooks is, is the, the slope of the demand curve. Basically, for good reason, we, we can argue that the demand for products of the pharmaceutical industry is inelastic. Um, we, w we probably will buy less of products of the pharmaceutical industry if they're very expensive rather than if they're very cheap, but the, the difference is not that great. For most products, the demand is elastic. I mean, for example, think of uh, I don't know, the mobile phones that presumably nearly everybody has about them somewhere now. Um, if if mobile phones cost five thousand um, pounds, 
very few of us would buy them. If they, if they cost five pounds, we'd all be buying them and throwing them away. So demand would vary quite a lot, depending on the price. But if you think of any medicine that you or somebody you know might take, uh, in general, that's not the case. If the price was low, they would st they would buy the amount they needed for the prescription. If the price is high, they would still probably if if they can afford it, buy the quantity they need for the prescription. So demand won't vary very much depending on the price.